When we fail to do what we do, people don't have enough to eat. We can't fail. So the ingenuity, innovation that I've seen has been nothing short of absolutely remarkable. Hi, everyone. I'm delighted to be joined on this episode by our partner, Claire Babineau Fontenot, who's been the CEO of Feeding America, the largest hunger relief organization in the U.S. that runs a network of 200 food banks and 60,000 pantries for over the past two years. Claire, with so many Americans already in a financially fragile situation, can you describe who relies on your network and really how has this picture changed specifically over this past year? One of my great privileges in my role is that I have the opportunity to go out to food distributions across the United States and to see whom it is that's turning to us for help. About 40% of the people who are turning to us for help right now are people who never before relied upon the charitable food system to feed themselves or their families. We have so many statistics that, that are, uh, can feel daunting at times, like even before the pandemic, for instance. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank said that about 40% of people in this country didn't have about $400 in cash to address an, an emergency. Um, think about then what it means when the pandemic comes in and when you lose one paycheck, you already find yourself having fallen over that that cliff that you were right on the precipice of for so long. So. Claire, when you mention that statistic, $400, it really just makes my uh, make, makes me just uh, take a breath because we've been talking about that statistic for the past couple of years when we focus on at BlackRock, the uh, lack of emergency savings as you identify. And we often talk about how that's just, you know, one paycheck away from a spiral downward, a missing rent check you know, your car breaks down, but it makes it so um, uh, visceral when you recognize that that could mean that you suddenly can't feed your family. I think about what you faced early in the pandemic where you kind of, your supply started to dry up, right? Those are your grocery stores, your restaurants, your operations, your people are volunteers. They had to socially distance. How did you continue to run Feeding America? How did, how did you pivot? and run your business? What we had to do uh, was basically change our, our whole distribution methodology nearly overnight. Um, we started by putting in place CDC guidelines, and there were some significant implications to doing that in order to keep ourselves safe, to keep our volunteers safe, and also to keep the people that we serve safe. We also had to recognize that so many of the people that we serve don't actually have access to cars. So part of the change in the model was to go where people were. The unfortunate truth though, is that it, it became clear relatively early uh, that this is gonna be a marathon and not a sprint. So part of what we've been doing too is, is looking at what are we going to do to address some of the more fundamental issues that give rise to crises like this one. I'm so glad you mentioned this because we know this isn't a sustainable situation. What are the structural barriers you see? We know there's a lot of food in America. You know, that's something that um, America is known for. So what can you imagine or what are you hoping will change to start to alleviate the situation? Part of what we need to do and what Feeding America plans to step up and be a partner in is addressing some of those root causes. Of, of food insecurity in the country. We produce more than enough food to feed every single one of the people in this country who are in need. But there are some things that we need to do from a policy perspective to make that easier. Right now, it is often um, in your financial interest as a business to throw food away. It costs you less money to throw it away than it does to give it to people in need. If you could like just wave a wand and just have one change happen overnight systemically, what would that be? The federal nutrition programs. If there were one thing that we could do that could, could make a significant impact on people facing hunger almost immediately, um, it would be that. It would be giving people the option to go into a store using an EBT card and to choose the food that they need for their families right there in their own 
communities. So you're saying find a way to use the already sort of traditional and established ways for people to get food, like grocery stores, farmers markets, et cetera, and make that a more accessible and regular channel. And then the role of food banks would be what? My hope, my aspiration is that turning to a food bank for food would be episodic, um, that people would come to us because they have a momentary need and that the food banks would be great partners as they already are in so many communities across the country in matching people with longer term resources. What this moment requires is innovation, creativity. It's throwing away the old playbook and it's writing a new one. And that's what you guys are doing with us.